Good morning, Olivier Pi. Good morning. And thank you for welcoming us here uh, in Avignon for an interview. So you've been directing the Avignon Festival since 2014. It's the biggest arts festival in France, one of the biggest in Europe. And we're looking forward to the upcoming fourth edition under your supervision uh, next July. You're also a distinguished writer, theatre director, an actor and also translator. And it's a great honour for us to be here, as we know you have an extremely busy schedule. So thank you for accepting this interview for the Institute for Research on the Renaissance, the Classical Age and the Enlightenment, which is a joint research centre of the French National Centre for Scientific Research, the CNRS, and University Paul Valéry in Montpellier. I'm Professor Florence Marc. I work on 16th and 17th century British drama, and I'm accompanied by Fabrice Belmessieri, a videographer at University Paul Valéry. And we've come to interview you about your work on Shakespeare with inmates of a prison, uh, the penitentiary of Le Ponté, very close to Avignon. Now, the interview will be screened on the 23rd of June in Montpellier during an international study day on what can Shakespeare do for us and what can we do with Shakespeare. One of the five panels that will be held on that day will deal with Shakespeare in captivity. Now, this study day is part of a three-year project funded by the European community and entitled New Faces, Facing Europe in Crisis, Shakespeare's World and Present Challenges. So the first aspect I would like to uh, deal with concerns the history behind your carceral programme. And first, I would like to uh, point out the relevance of staging Shakespeare in prison, because it goes back to the origins of Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare's theatre when in London, in the Renaissance period, public playhouses could not be erected within the city, but were rejected in the suburbs, uh, together with houses of prostitution, madhouses and prisons. And the partnership between the Avignon Festival and the uh, prison house of Le Ponté started, I think, in 2004 when uh, Hortense Archambault and Vincent Baudrier, as co-directors of the festival, uh, put the focus on spectatorship. That is to say, productions were performed in prison. But as the first artist at the head of the festival since Villard, you completely shifted the focus on theatrical practice. Prisoners, under your guidance, perform in prison behind bars and also out of the prison in a festival venue. So what led you to shift the focus in the first place and can you tell us more about the way you built up the adventure? I went there to present the venue of, of the show that we were about to do in bars. What was the show on, on the time? I um, can't remember what show it was, but whatever. <clears throat> and to present the festival because they, they could have a day off to see shows out of the prison. Some could. Um, and then they asked me, those who were there, to come and do a workshop. And I said, I might find somebody to do, to do it. And they said, no, not somebody. <laughs> it has to be you. <laughs> And I said, well, I'll see, which is an elegant way to say no. <laughs> because I was very reluctant to, to go there. And I felt I didn't have the strength to do that. And, but I did it. I did, I did first one week of work with them. And I found it even more difficult than I thought. Um, then I wanted to stop, but... They asked me to stay, <laughs> and I did. And we worked first on Greek tragedy, um, on Prometheus, who's a political prisoner. And after this year, I um, asked them, what, what would they do? What kind of play would they do? And they said, Hamlet. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> they said Hamlet. And again, I was a bit reluctant to work on Hamlet 
with them. I know it's very difficult to work in prison for many reasons. And then I said, okay, if you say so, let's try to do a Hamlet. And I began to work with them. And they loved it. They loved it. And it's, it's, I think that going from the Greek tragedy to Hamlet, that helps them a lot. All right. Um, I would like to focus more specifically on the dramatic corpus, as you just uh, started to mention. So first of all, Prometheus and Bound in 2015-2016, then Hamlet behind bars in 2016 and outside the prison in 2017, Antigone in 2017, and now it's going to be out in 2018. And you started with Macbeth uh, um, this year. So Shakespeare and ancient writers, probably because they reach this universal dimension and they, they are able to tell stories that are relevant to everyone, even nowadays. But uh, why Shakespeare in particular? How, well, do you think Shakespeare uh, conveys an alternative vision of the world that is relevant to inmates in particular? No. No, I don't, because I don't think that inmates are have any characteristic. I mean, there are people like you and me, so it's not an identity to be in two bars. It's, there are people like you and me. Some have read, some have never read a book, some would like to do theater, some just go there to have something to do. Um, but it's not an identity, they are all different. Why Shakespeare, why the Greeks, because it's difficult, because it's the top of the top. And I wanted to do something that was a challenge. Mm. And I also worked on um, Genet's play, Splendid, and it was too close to their life. And it didn't work the way I wanted to. So I went back to the Greek. And Hamlet, it went very well, because they had the possibility to also to laugh, to... To, to change the, the, the behavior, to, to, to act another way. There was plenty of possibilities to act. You, you can do Hamlet to any, any kind, yeah. any way you want. And they felt that they were freer than in the Greek tragedy. That's what, I think that's why they loved it. Now, um, when you stage Hamlet, um, well, I mean, there are plays by Shakespeare in which prison is physically represented. I'm thinking of Measure for Measure mm. or Richard II. But in Hamlet, prison is evoked metaphorically in Act 2, Scene 2, when uh, Hamlet says that for him, Denmark is a prison with many confines, words, uh, wards and dungeons. And yet, he says he could be bounded in a nutshell and count himself as a king of infinite space. Mm -hmm. So how did you um, deal with that particular passage? Uh, was it a kind of reflection of the freedom of the mind? Um, does Hamlet stimulate the imagination, dreams through the theater, and bring the idea of another kind of liberty and freedom? Freedom in prison is not the main topic. The first issue is dignity. Uh, they know they are in prison, okay? That's part of the game. But they're constantly fighting not to lose their dignity. And I think on this, they found something in Hamlet to express that constant fight, um, which is double sentence in a way, because you have this lack of freedom, okay? but you're still a human being. Mm. And that's not true. You're not a human being every day in a prison and not every hour. You are a human being when you do theater with friends. It's a small community. I mean, the, 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 workshop, the workshop is a small community in the prison. And they, they found some dignity doing that. But I think that that is the point. And do you think that because Shakespeare uh, was a humanist playwright, 
it helps staging Shakespeare, it helps in rediscovering their part of humanity in the others, in themselves, and uh, getting more confidence in others and in themselves. Maybe, but when you are in the globe, I mean the theater, mm -hmm. you are quite protected, but out, outside of the globe, you can die any minute. So it's a violent world. Definitely. And you have this pressure of the possibility to die any time of, of, from a knife or all the time. And this violent world, I think that maybe that's something they understand more than the young bourgeois actor that I'm used to play with. <laughs> yes. And, um, as far as I know, when you put on Hamlet with them, uh, you had this set at the background representing the Last Judgment by Michelangelo. No, by Tintoré. Tintoré, right. So, Tintoré, no. But that was out of the doors, out of the bars, because we didn't do that set. We, didn't, we were not allowed to get such an important set in prison, so we had to do with nothing. But when you are in prison, you have the prison as a set, and you have to deal with that. And when we wanted to, we had the possibility to do it four times, three times, out of the prison, mm -hmm. which was very difficult <laughs> and took weeks and months of, of uh, dealing. And negotiations. And negotiations. Yeah, but we've done it. And then I felt I needed a sort of a set, just one image. And, and so why the last judgment? Because that's kind of, you know... It's beautiful, it's, it's a beautiful picture, it's very rich. There's many characters in it. And also the, 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 w w when you fold the, the curtain, as we do when it goes on stage, you have all the skulls on stage and it worked very well. Obviously, it was quite relevant with Hamlet. Now, what about Macbeth? Because there's a very striking passage in Macbeth when Macbeth commissioned the two murderers to go and kill Banquo and his son Fleance. Uh, there is this interesting exchange between the two murderers and Macbeth when the two murderers says, say that they are ready to do anything because they've lost any hope in life. Um, does it resonate a lot with that kind of state of mind or um, about the idea of hope, <coughs> reconciliation with the world? Well, it's different. It's really different. Um, Hamlet is thinking all the time and Macbeth is fighting all the time. It's, that's something different and they felt it very, very different. But my translation is not ready for Macbeth, so we'll have to do it next year. We went back to the Greek for this year. But, right. but we'll do it. We'll do it. And also, you know, they worked on Hamlet, but they looked at many videos and they read other Shakespeare plays. So it's the, the workshop became a Greek and Shakespeare uh, workshop through the years. So definitely I want to go back to Shakespeare with them. And so I wanted to ask you about a suggestion I have concerning Richard II, in which Hamlet compares the world, whereas Hamlet compares the world to a prison, Richard II compares his prison to the world, peopling his empty cell with thoughts that are generated both by his brain and soul. And of course, we all know that Richard II was the founding play of the festival in 1947 and that it definitely left its mark on the festival because um, it gave its name to Villard's aesthetic, the aesthetic of the street tools. Villard directed the, um, the last act in the prison with three stools and just, uh, uh, um, just one light, a bundle of light. So, well, the prison scene uh, in Richard II might be interesting to deal with. And is it a play you contemplate putting on with inmates, perhaps in the future? I think that's a very good idea. Because that's the first play that has been played in La Cour du Palais des Papes. 
you're right to say that the question of how to, to, to stage prison created the Villars aesthetic, not only Richard II, but the prison itself. And there was another play, La Terrasse de Midi, which was a rewriting of Hamlet. So I can't say that Shakespeare is a co-foundator of the festival. That's true. And it's Shakespeare, it's, prob it's probably the, the, the author that has been played the, the most. In yes, definitely. It's almost every year. And I could even say it's increasing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we don't play much Corneille or Racine, that's a pity. Racine had to wait until 1975 to be performed for the first time in the uh, and Moliere, festival. We do, but not that much. But Shakespeare, it's every year. Mm -hmm. um, maybe also because we, we, the French people, we rewrite, we translate every year. We have tons of translations, and it's, it's a constant workshop on the text. That's great. I mean, we, we do that work to re-question the text all the time. And it's also perhaps because Shakespeare is emblematic of popular theatre, theatre that addresses everyone, uh, very yes civic no. theatre. Yes and no, because when you think about Richard II, it has never done before in France. Yeah, never, never, never. Before. So that was not like Romeo or Hamlet. It was something unknown, absolutely unknown. Um, and all the um, historical plays are very, very unknown to the French people. And we've done a huge success with Henry the Sixth. By Thomas Jolie. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to expand a little bit on to theatre on theatre as an art, and I wonder whether performing in prison uh, pushes the theatre to its to its very limits. I mean that theatre is about a constrained space, uh, how to create a whole world out of a black box, uh, and in prison, theatre seems to be even more of a challenge. And I'd like to point out three different directions. First of all the fact that the prison is in prison everything is vertical you've got vertical bars the cells have very high ceilings buildings are vertical the hierarchy is omnipresent so how how do you break with this verticality or play with it second direction uh, there is this opposition between the inside and the outside that is inmates tend to close off to keep their emotions, feelings and thoughts inside, perhaps not to show their vulnerability. And theatre is about bringing out feelings and emotions. And last direction, how do you deal with this dialectic of visibility and invisibility? Because, of course, theatre is about seeing. It's the place where you see. And your programme deals with a hidden segment of society. And the challenge is to bring a hidden segment of society uh, into the spotlight with the Avignon Festival. Now we're going to show the, um, the show in Avignon, in the festival, out of the prison. But that was unbelievable when I began four years ago. Um, and what I didn't know is that even it was even impossible for the audience to get in. So when we play in prison, we don't play for the audience. I mean, for the Festival d'Avignon regular audience, not even for the families. They are not allowed to get in. So it's only for the inmates, to the, from the inmates to the inmates. And that's also great because they discover um, sometimes that's the first time they went to theatre, they've been to theatre, and they discover it with, um, with men like them. It's, that's surprising. And I was, the first year I was uh, moved to tears, not only because of the show, but um, of the silence, of the listening of the audience. They were very, very obedient and careful not to make noise, not to disturb uh, the, the actors on the so-called stage, because we had no stage. <laughs> uh, and that was really strong also. 
uh, about the, the, the behavior on stage and how to show your emotion. Um, yes, it began very slow because those sometimes young and beautiful and muscular guys, they, ha they had no body, they had no voice. So they were very, they looked very strong for some of them. But when they were on stage, no voice, nobody, uh, no possibility to touch each, each other's also, not even, for, not, even, not even for a fight. And that was very surprising. And then step by step, it changed. But it took more than two years probably to let them shout and move and, and you know, the most difficult thing for them was to stand. Because when you're in prison, you never stand. You move all the time. You walk all the time. So they, they said to me that the most difficult thing for them was not to move. All right. And so far, the performances took place at the Maison Jean Villard, a highly symbolic venue, since Villard was a champion of theatre for all people, democratic civic theatre. Uh, as we said, Villard also founded the Avignon Festival with two Shakespearean plays. And do you contemplate performing in different venues in the future? We've done it in Paris, in a theatre in Paris. That was great. It was a great time. And this year we'll try another place because the Maison Jean Villard was highly symbolical, yes. And we've done it on purpose. Uh, but it was small. Yes. It's only 100 seats and people were, were standing in line to get in. So we'll try to have a bigger audience for the next festival. And to conclude, I would like to come back to um, a label that is often given to the Avignon Festival. The Avignon Festival is regularly called a uh, utopia. Um, would you say that Shakespeare in prison is a utopian experience? Absolutely. It's an utopia they gave to me and they probably changed my life more than I changed them. That's a wonderful world okay. to <laughs> conclude the interview. Thank you so Let much. Let it be the conclusion. Thank you. <laughs>